Hello and welcome to Focus here on France 24. The Nobel Peace Prize ceremony will be getting underway in the Norwegian capital Oslo later today, Friday, but it'll be rather different to last year's glamorous affair when Barack Obama accepted the award in front of many admiring European dignitaries. This time, for the first time since 1936, the winner won't be able to accept his award in person. Instead, he'll be represented by an empty chair. Chinese dissident Li Xiaobo is in prison and keen to avoid any loss of face, Beijing is keeping a close eye on many of his family and supporters, preventing them from attending the ceremony as well. Liu's wife is under house arrest, his lawyer is forbidden from speaking to the media, and other intellectuals are also being silenced without any proper legal procedure. It's all a stark reminder that while China's economic progress may be dazzling, it still has a long way to go on human rights. Our China correspondent Henry Morton reports. Taking his chances with the authorities is an occupational hazard for Liu Anjun. He's a member of an informal network of Beijing petitioners and rights activists. On the day that Liu Xiaobo was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, Anjun was standing outside of the winner's house, a show of defiance that didn't go unnoticed by the authorities. Policemen were following our car. When we learned some of our friends had been arrested, we decided to go to my place, so everyone would be safe. But when we got to my apartment block, security personnel were already there, monitoring us. Many petitioners like Anju and are upset with the authorities over the arrest of Liu Xiaobo. Petitioners like Xu Tsang Yong, who has been a long-time supporter of the Nobel Peace Prize winner and who joined protests the day Liu was sentenced to 11 years in prison. Without a home, he goes from friend's house to friend's house, doing his best to avoid the police. It's so important to award the Nobel Peace Prize to Liu Xiaobo because he tells the truth. How can we live when the Communist Party has absolute power and the people suffer? Since the announcement that Liu Xiaobo had won the Nobel Peace Prize, the authorities have started to monitor scores of intellectuals. Those considered the greatest threat have been placed under house arrest, while many others have had their phones tapped and are forbidden from speaking to foreign reporters. Intellectuals like Pu Chiang, who could only talk to us by telephone. The policemen gave me no reason. They didn't even show me a warrant or tell me that my behavior was illegal. But if I meet with foreign journalists, then they will really restrain my freedom. The situation is similar to that before the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, when the government cracked down on dissidents and activists, although many see the government's reaction to Liu's winning the Peace Prize as worse than two years ago. The security pressure on rights activists is even harsher and more powerful than before the Olympics because now the government wants to block any spread of information related to this Nobel Prize inside China. Many Chinese dissidents are hoping that this latest crackdown will backfire on the Communist Party while highlighting their plight to the international community. This crackdown will show very clearly to the West and the rest of the world a more edifying vision of what the Communist Party does in China because some Western countries may still have in mind that China is making progress on human rights. With Liu jailed and his close family under constant supervision, it's looking extremely unlikely that there'll be anybody present to receive this year's award, the first time that's happened since 1936, when Nazi Germany refused permission for winner Karl von Ossietzky to travel to Oslo. Well, for a more in-depth look at the reaction to the prize and at Li Xiaobo's work, I'm joined now here in the studio by Nancy Li, who's the head of Chinese affairs at the International Federation of Human Rights, based here in Paris. Nancy, thanks very much for joining us here Thank on Cosmic Cat this morning. Me. So, uh, first of all, tell us a little bit more about Li Xiaobo's work um, and why he's in prison, and, and just what has led him to be to win this award in the first place. He was first of all an emblematic figure during the Tiananmen movement. He his insistence 
insistence on pacifism uh, largely influenced his students. So he was really responsible for the peaceful nature of the demonstrations. And he negotiated a peaceful withdrawal of the students. And, and then after that, he's always insisted that the Chinese government respect its constitution. He is so moderate in attitude and in voice that in other countries, he would not even be considered a dissident. So he really deserves this, uh, the prize, prize for peace. And, and is this a major loss of face for the Chinese government? This empty chair sitting there, it's going to be a pretty powerful symbol for them. Um, and, and of course, losing face in China uh, uh, is a really great disgrace. Will this be a real problem for them? What about the loss of face for the Chinese people? I n never in my life I would think that I would be saying China and Nazi Germany in the same sentence. Mm -hmm. That is just in unimaginable shame. However, what the Chinese have been doing, the way the Chinese government has been pressuring other governments not to come to the ceremony, it just proves that the Nobel Committee did the right thing mm -hmm. to give the prize to Liu Xiaobo that they really have, that the government, that China really has this big problem on human rights. And what about that, that Nobel Prize? Obviously, within, within uh, Europe, it's been, received a, a great deal of press. But what about within China itself? Is, is this an institution that many Chinese people will care about or indeed know about? There's been incredible excitement on uh, the internet in China. Uh, you cannot say Liu Xiaobo. You cannot type in Liu Xiaobo or uh, even Nobel. Um, but there are many ways to get around it. And uh, a lot of the young, educated uh, internet users uh, technology savvy people have been very excited about it, including many who are not even political, but they hate censorship. They're the young, free thinking people in China, and they hate censorship, and they've been using all kinds of ways to get around it and to spread the news. And, and we saw in that report that this this uh, prize seems to have kind of spearheaded a clampdown on dissidents within China, perhaps not so much on the internet, but certainly um, in 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 real life. You know, is is that is that going to be worse than you know back in two thousand and eight before the Olympics? Is this another you know real clampdown on freedom of expression there? It is the kind of reaction to a loss of face that is not going to last. Uh, like you must have heard yesterday, they had this phony peace prize ceremony in Beijing uh, called the Confucius Peace Prize. Confucius, up to 15 or 20 years ago, was vilified in China. They burned all the learning centers, destroyed all the studies of Confucius. And today, they're giving a Confucius Peace Prize. Perhaps 15 years in, from now, there's going to be a new government in China, and they're going to have a Liu Xiaobo Peace Prize. And so how much notice is China really taking of, of the international criticism that's been levelled at it? Clearly this, this prize is a reaction, the Confucius Prize is a reaction to the criticism that's been levelled at it, but is, is, are they taking any, any, any real uh, notice of, of what's been said? Well, it's been taken so seriously that they are uh, reacting hysterically. They call the Nobel Committee a bunch of clowns. What happens next year? What if the, a Chinese person, scientist, who wins a Nobel Prize prize for science. What are they going to say? Oh, we don't want this prize from the clowns? Or are they going to say, just kidding, you guys are not clowns, you guys are fine now. And what about the future for Liu Xiaobo in terms of, he's, he's serving this 11 year, year uh, jail sentence, but um, is that likely to be changed at all as a result of this award? Or if, if anything, will his life become worse? It's a strange thing to say about somebody who is in prison, but Liu Xiaobo is the master of his own destiny. He has always said, I only want to be an intellectual who is decent. Why is it so difficult in this country? Well, thank you very much indeed, Nancy Lee, for uh, coming in and answering our questions on Liu Xiaobo this morning. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for on this edition of Focus. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Do stay tuned to France 24.